yeah asthma question number 1 the key word in this question are we are getting a 24 year old frequent episode of chest tightness associated with dry cough and the history of asthma is there and currently using salbutamol inhaler almost every day okay and the respiratory rate is 18 saturation 98% and peak exploratory flow rate is 58 or 580 liters it is about 90% of the predicted occasional wheeze what is the line next line of management okay well he is already taking salbutamol now what next to be done the answer to this question is b commence low dose of baclomethazone inhaler twice daily so the golden line to remember is if an adult with asthma not controlled with saba ka saba stand for short acting beta agonist <coughs> then you add low dose inhaled corticosteroid this is the golden line to be remember in fact it's the gist of this question summary of the question okay of course i'll be talking in much more detail so what the nice guidelines say as per how to manage a case of asthma nice guidelines so the nice guidelines are as follows okay so, there are few changes they have done again what are the uh, this was a step 2 that i am going to discuss now but after that there will be step 3 also there is some change in step 3 that i'll discuss again and that is very important to know what the latest guidelines which have given by the nice so first of all nice guidelines has given step how to treat a case of asthma step number 1 step 1 Pace, who is the patient who to whom we considered as step one? Newly diagnosed asthma comes to you. So what we give is short acting beta agonist, so called Saba. And you notice that in our question also, the patient was already taking Saba, that is okay, Salbutamol. Now the question says that he is not getting controlled by Saba. What next? as per nice guidelines not control on previous step or new or point now come the catch point even the newly diagnosed asthma with symptom more than thrice or night time waking point to be noted he is here also newly diagnosed asthma here not control or a newly diagnosed asthma with more than three times a week or even night time waking that also come in the step 2 that me for them the step 2 will be the initial starting point so in such cases you give saba and low dose inhaled steroid that means you are getting a patient who has got five times of attack per week or maybe he he is having night time attack coming to you for the first time straight way you start with saba and ics ics is inhaled low go dose corticosteroids well patient still not control not control we are giving it now saba and low dose ics as usual before now they have added ltra leukotriene receptor antagonist like like a uh, montelukas okay point to be noted this new change has occurred previously in this place laba was there laba is long acting beta agonist but now this new guidelines say the third step you add ltra now still not control we come to stage 4 in stage 4 we continue saba as before we continue ics as before but what they change the what they have done change is that they have removed uh, they have removed ltra and they now added long acting beta agonist also okay uh, this is the three what they said plus plus 
LTRA, you continue depending on patient response to LTRA. This is a line they have made separately. In fact, for exam point of view, you can continue say that you in this, you add LABA. For our exam point of view, okay? So, it means in every step they are adding something. So, in step 3 they added LTRA, in step 4 they added LABA. Okay, now we come to stage 5, still not control. Still not control, what he says, now what the change? Saba plus or minus LTRA, LTRA plus minus. Switch ICS and LABA for a maintenance and, uh, and, okay, and then include a low dose ICS, right? And in the next stage five, in, in the still or, or we, what we can do is SABA or LTRA now medium dose ICS. So what he want to convey the message is, what he want to convey Start with Saba, then you add ICS, then you add LTRA, and then you add LABA. They are the four things you got to remember right now. There are little, uh, now what is to be done in the serious cases that I'll be discussing separate. As of now, you have to remember up to this stage, up to this stage of Stage 1, 2, 3, 4, stage 1 is Saba, stage 2 is plus ICS, stage 3 is LTRA, stage 4 is at lab, LABA. That's all. Easy, easy, Saba, then you add ICS, then you add LTRA, then you add LABA. Very easy. The whole thing has been summarized into just one slide only. Now, what to do in serious cases? What are indication indication that I'll be talking in different question altogether. So we are clear about we are clear about this first question. Now, a little bit of pharmacology I like to add to you, which I'll be needing in the coming question. So let me give you the basic concept right now. That is regarding inhaled corticosteroid, what we have written is ICS. So what they even say, they have even done the dosing also, low dose, moderate or high dose of ICS. What is the meaning of low, moderate and high dose? Low dose means when we have the patient is using less than or equal to 400 microgram of bidosonide or equivalent drug. Standard ka they take as bidosonide is the standard what they take. Moderate between 400 to 800. And more than 800 we consider as high dose. So again easy, ICS dose less than 400, 4 to 800 and more than 800. So this is summary, the whole slide is just squeezed into this only, so you can make a box like this. I gave you one box previously, the second box regarding dose of inhaled steroids, okay? So in our question, the patient is already taking Saba, and as per new guidelines, we are going to add low dose ICS. So now you are convinced why the answer of our question is, at low dose of ICS. Now we come to the question number two. We are getting a 29 year old woman. Asthma is for review and she has been discharged with acute exacerbation and report generally poor control with a persistently nighttime cough and exertional dyspnea. Okay. Her current therapy is salbutamol inhaler, baclomethazone, inhaler and she is taking salmetrol also. So she is taking Saba, she is taking steroids and she is taking Laba also. And 
she has a missing appointment and requests a medication the view view side effect what is the next step the answer is leukotriene receptor antagonist in fact what she not the why i added this question what i told you previously the first step was saba second step was ics and third step was laba and the fourth one was leukotriene receptor antagonist this was the guidelines for the pnis had given previously now the latest guidelines change is that first second third is ltr and the fourth is laba anyway the patient is already come to you with this now you have to add lt ltr in this leukotriene receptor antagonist so i of course i hope you are very clear about it ki what to do in this patient how to go about it okay now we talk about we are question number 3 we are getting under patient having asthma present with acute shortness of breath and wheeze and now life threatening now from a routine uh, case of asthma where we have given step 1 2 3 4 now as i told you i'll be talking to you more serious cases this is the question now the patient has come with life threatening okay we have given now first thing what they ask what the criteria of life threatening the answer of this question is this one why it the ka answer why not others again we go to the basic concept okay now if you look into this pco2 okay this is in the normal range if you calculate in millimeter of mercury it is somewhere around 41 millimeter of mercury those of who you are well aware of the routine because of this millimeter of mercury so this is almost in the normal range of co2 but the thing is it's a normal co2 this is the gold medal getting question normal co2 in a patient with acute severe asthma is an indicator that attack is life threatening cold medal question is this note down this line very carefully what do you say co2 is normal this is life threatening life threatening Go, make a box of this line the boxes what i am making asking you make make them boxes a day before exam you read these boxes your question will be will be from this boxes only so why this answer let's learn the basic concept so now here come the asthma is divided as per nice guidelines as per nice guidelines they divide acute asthma in four category moderate severe life threatening and near fatal okay near fatal also the fourth one although majority of time they talk about this also but you should know there is something called near fatal also so as of now as of now normal co2 come in the range of life threatening note it down the point i told you and 5.5 kpa if you want to convert into millimeter of mercury this is about 41.25 millimeter of mercury and normal paco2 is is around 40 to 45 millimeter of mercury okay so this is very well in the normal range now if the co2 is less than normal if the co2 is less than normal then it is less severe very right so this is the normal range of co2 normal range this is high and this is low so what he says is the co2 is less than normal it is less severe if it is in the normal range it is life threatening life threatening and definitely if it is more than normal then it come in the near fatal category 
तो नाउ यू कुड अंडरस्टूड सो नॉर्मल रेंज ऑफ सी ओ टू अगेन रिपीटिंग सेकेंड टाइम इस लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग बिलो दैट इज लेस सीवियर मोर देन नॉर्मल रेंज ऑफ सी ओ टू इज नियर फेटल ओके सो वाई इट द आंसर वट आर द बेसिक कंसेप्ट बाई विच वी कैन एक्सप्लेन कि वाई दीज फिगर है सो फ्रेंड्स सो वट हैपन सपोज द पेशेंट हैज एस्थमा एस्थमा इज देयर so in that case this and remember there is no impairment of alveolar function point to be noted this is important point in asthma the alveoli are functioning normally problem is in the big airway not at the level of alveoli okay agreed but the minute volume is increased why because in these every asthma cases we know the respiratory rate increases that's why he has dyspnea and okay so uh, in this case as the respiratory rate increases so that's why the minute volume increases the so point to be noted minute volume increases respiratory rate is increase noted down make a box of this line so more more minute volume with the normal alveolar function co2 will go out to so, co2 will go out to so, initially there will be low co2 because of hyperventilation hyperventilation CO2 is going out, and the normal CO2 goes down in the body. So you can say, in other way, there will be respiratory alkalosis. Make a box of this line. This is the first thing to happen in a case of severe asthma, right? It's understood. So now we understood why the CO2 will go down. Well, now later on, later on, later on, more and more airway obstruction is there, more and more bronchospasm is there. With the bronchospasm, now CO two is not able to go out. So, let's say I say I say take normal CO two. I say normal CO two is forty. and with the starting the co2 went to 30 that what we happen we got uh, we we got low co2 okay right sir why because of hyperventilation but now this what happen when he was in the initial stage of asthma but as the asthma goes in more advanced bronchospasm occur now co2 is not able to go out so now co2 will start rising rising means it become maybe 32 then 34 and 36 so as more and more bronchospasm occur co2 start rising and ultimately it comes to 40 so by the time patient achieve 40 oh that means the patient really is in severe bronchial asthma so normal co2 is a sign of life threatening so now up to 45 i told you the normal range that we take and after 45 if still start going co2 that means it is near a fatal the after 45 mm of mercury the co2 lay 50 this in the range of so called near fatal by the time patient develop cyanosis also so i hope you are very much clear about the basic concept ki why normal co2 is considered as a life threatening scenario right so the answer this question was as i told you is is b bombay rest all are the rest all are the features of asthma asthma but they they are not talking about cause life threatening and these other option i'll be again discussing in detail in the coming question uh, in one of the more question then you will have a much better concept but as of now the learning this the 
key word to remember in this particular slide C normal co2 is the life threatening is the summary of the whole question in just one line we come to question number 5 all the following are known cause of occupational asthma except the answer is cadmium rest all are the cause of occupational now how to approach how do you diagnose a case of occupational asthma it itself is a trick don't down so when you suspect the golden line again the summary of the line of the whole thing is given in this occupational asthma either patient present with concerned with chemical at work or work worsening the their asthma or he may notice that symptom he become better at week weekends if you get this line the patient feels better on weekend when he is at home he feels i am totally free from symptom or he says doctor when i went to the factory where i work i feel very breathless if do these two things are you are getting you are dealing with occupational asthma of course he will be working in a place a factory where there are more and more chances of <coughs> exposure to any of the known allergen right so some this is summary what is in front of you now what are the important occupational causes isocyanate this is the most common cause is a very frequently asked question in mrcp and what they will write in the exam they will not write isocyanate they will write that uh, they spray paint spray paint this is one painter who is doing uh, the painting by spray or foam molding adhesive spoon ka, ka adhesive are there in such cases ka, right so classically they talk about spray painting a spray painter has come to you and problem that means you are dealing with isocyanate otherwise platinum smoldering floor are the other one so they are the one which lead to a type of occupational asthma but cadmium as given in our option this is not a cause you can see rest all are given in the list also now now mrcp is going to ask you what next patient has given you history what next after that the next is serial measurement of peak exploratory flow rate during work and as well as away from the work then the patient has come to you you really want to confirm although the history itself is quite suggestive that you are dealing with the occupational induced asthma so now we will do peak exploratory flow rate okay rate this will be doing in the weekends as well as we'll ask one day that you should come soon after the your work so now you are getting two figures one is soon after the work and one is in the weekend if there's a remarkable difference is there then you are surely that you are dealing with a with a case of occupation induced and now if this is the scenario then with the nice guidelines say that this patient should be referred to a respiratory specialist for the patient to be uh, for with management of suspected occupational asthma so friends the two keywords are what are the what are the occupation and number two do peak exploratory only one keyword do pefr during work and away from the work that's all the golden line to remember the peak exploratory flow rate during the work and and during the weekend and refer to a specialist question 5 26 year old woman history of asthma she is taking salbutamol beclomethazone salmetrol oh she is taking she is taking uh, short acting saba and i and ic as as well as, as laba also and now she is pregnant and she stopped the beclomethazone and salmetrol okay in salmetrol 
because she is so what she has done she has stopped ICS and she has stopped Saba of her own. What is the most appropriate action? So what now patient has come to you? A pregnant lady with a history of asthma where she was taking Saba, ICS and Laba. She stopped Saba and ICS but she is still taking Laba. So what is the advice? Answer is you reassure and start both what she missed. The answer is that you she should continue, continue taking Saba and she continue taking ICS. So the first thing is reassure. Why she stopped her own that she felt that these drugs may do some damage to the, to the fetus. But you have to say no, they are all inhaler. All are going by inhaler, they are going in the body, they are acting in the lungs and coming out. Practically they are not going, they are not, not entering the body. Entering the body means they are not actually going to the fetus. Moreover, their dose of inhaled is in micrograms. It's too low. In contrast to the oral drug where the dose is very high and that any drug can even go to the fetus. So that's why, that's why the summary is the as per uh, British Thoracic Society as well as, as well as a uh, nice guideline. They say uh, that you can continue, you can continue all the drug uh, for the better control of asthma because if her asthma gets worsened, then due to hypoxia, fetal fetus will, or the newborn, uh, that developing fetus will have lot of side effect. So taking, so in nutshell, patient should carry on taking all the drugs, all the drugs, okay. Inhaled drug can be taken in normal way. There is no side effect. Even during breastfeeding also she can take. So note down the golden line, she can take take all drugs via inhaled route inhaled route in pregnancy she can take this the box you make it again the summary and the entire question is summarized into one line in pregnancy she can take all via inhaled because they are not, because dose is too low and they are not going to the, they are not going to cross the placenta. Again, a lovely question, question number six, 60, 38 year old and she episodic wheezing while playing rugby and the, what should we need to investigate? The problem is episodic wheezing, okay, no history of cough, no smoking and no past history also. Oh, so very interesting question. Patient just comes says, oh I got, rugby is a very heavy game. It needs lot of stamina, lot of running also. But he says that whenever I do, I have a episodic weakness of wheezing. That means he, in nutshell, we can say he has an exercise induced type of asthma. Okay, now we have to we have to do the investigation. The answer to this question is A. Okay. Why? What are the nice guidelines? So, as per nice guidelines. You, you are getting one patient to whom you suspect asthma. Why? Because he says uh, there is episodic shortness of breath, right? And one of the classical features of asthma is episodic. Episodic shortness of breath is asthma. Make a box of this line also. Now let's do what we do. So in such cases, our approach is 
phano and spirometry with reversibility so these two tests are done one is phano and other is spirometry to make a box of this line also so newly diagnosed asthma to whom you are thinking to whom you want to diagnose the summary is go for phano and go for spirometry this is the golden line to remember okay right so now nice as i told you nice guidelines have re released the guidelines how to diagnose the case so let me talk more detail well the latest guidelines say that subjective the clinical judgment it is good to take history like in this case he says when i play rugby i feel uh, breathless history is suggesting but is not a diagnosing the nice guide clearly say that you have to document it by some investigation previously history was good enough then again the new guidelines say you have to document uh, how to document so so he says objective test needed initially it was subjective subjective means what the patient come and tell you symptom and objective tests are the investigation as i have talking to you so what investigation are to be done are two thing one was phano and otherwise spirometry and nice guidelines say that use of fractional exhaled nitric oxide is a must phano is fractional exhaled nitric oxide what is this let me tell you and about phano most of student are not very comfortable so let me tell you more detail about phano so nitric oxide it is being produced by three types of nitric oxide synthetase what we write as nos three types so that means there are three ways where a nitric oxide can be produced one of them is inducible okay out of three n n level of inducible uh, nos it rises in inflammatory cell particularly when the eosinophils are raised so to repeat again there are three uh, nos nitric oxide synthetases are there which produce nitric oxide but one of them particularly rises when the eosinophilia is there now i don't need to tell to the illustrious student listening to me that in case of asthma eosinophil count goes high increase eosin increase eosinophil means increase i n o s and that will lead to level of nitric oxide will definitely rise and one more thing not only level will rise more the inflammation more will be level of nitric oxide so now you understood one a what is feno and what the important and how it is related to bronchial asthma and after that definitely spirometry is to be done okay spirometry is done and the peak flow rate are the uh, variability variability means you are doing the test uh, initially and after that you give a bronco dilator you give a saba you give saba and you see how much improvement is there and that is spirometry with reversibility the point about talking to you Look what they say that you are doing spirometry with re reversible is the second criteria that we need to do in a case of uh, asthma so friends we are getting how to test a patient of above 17 years you should have a spirometry with the bronchodilator reversibility you do the test first later on you give bronchodilator and you see how much improvement is there and of course everybody should done fe and o should be done in all so friend this is the summary summary of diagnosing a newly case of asthma so again rem reminding you simple history is not good enough in a routine case who lands up in opd this in two investigation should be done so now we come to question number 7 we have a 24 year old male 100 uh, he has come with severe asthma <coughs> severe acute asthma given 100% oxygen 
nebulized cell beta mole and ipratropium bromide and as well as intravenous hydrocortisone point to be noted here now if they are not giving ics they are giving intravenous hydrocortisone why he has severe asthma but still no improvement point to be noted despite intravenous steroid no improvement what next next step classical mrcp question you give injection magnesium sulfate intravenous why the answer why not others let's learn in more detail first of all the new guidelines nice guidelines they do not support the use of the current guidelines do not support routine use of non invasive ventilation in asthma golden line to remember golden line to remember is that they do not support use of non invasive ventilation in asthmatic patient of course so what he says was the british thoracic societies as well as nice guidelines how to manage a case of acute asthma in the previous questions i told you regarding acute asthma i'll be discussing now the time has come and there i also told you we classify into moderate uh, severe life threatening and near fatal so let me differentiate between the all and then we see how to manage we call as moderate moderate asthma when the peak expiratory flow rate pefr is peak expiratory flow rate peak expiratory flow rate you do it and if it is more than 75% okay of the predicted or or okay and the uh, 75% is the best or or the predicted number 2 speech is normal point to be noted he can speak normally respiratory rate is less than 25 pulse is less than 110 so they are all normal in fact i can say these are normal normal speech ska pulse was less than 110 and respiratory rate less than 25 this is moderate now let us see severe now now 50 to 75 was the moderate here 33 to 50 percent point we noted it is now gone below 50 percent and 32 33 to 50 percent now the patient cannot speak a single sentence in one breath look into this what do you mean by this statement i'll give you okay patient has come to you and he says doctor i have i am feeling uncomfortable i have breathing problem so he told one line but he could speak in one sentence but he what he told you doctor uh, i feel breathless while playing rugby now one more patient has come to you doctor <coughs> doctor i i feel breathless while playing rugby to so what he said he could not complete one sentence in one breath it means patient may be a good friend of you okay he calls you on telephone at midnight 2 o'clock and he says doctor my friend i and the, you can diagnose that he is having severe asthma why he cannot speak a single sentence in one breath respiratory rate more than 25 it was less than 25 now more than 25 pulse less than 110 more than 110 so you can nicely compare the two figure below ka so moderate and severe now we come to life threatening life threatening it is less than 33 so in fact there are many more criteria 
but by and large in your exam whichever exam you write in the world they will be always talking about this p e f r they will talk so if lot of it is always a long question lot of things are given you look into p e f it is given peak activity flow rate 50 to 75 percent 33 to 50 percent less than 33 percent that's all this one figure will give you a clear-cut idea whether i am dealing with moderate severe or life-threatening this is the best criteria like in this case he mentioned about he mentioned about speed these these are there of course they are supporting but at time the figure may be overlapping they may confuse you so remember this is the single best criteria other thing can be little bit of overlapping may be there so but as of now my duty is to tell you what are the figure so this we are clear about it nicely now we come to this so in this case in life threatening the oxygen saturation become less than 92% Normal PaCO2, this I explained to you. I explained to you that when this is happening, that means that, that alveolar uh, transition, this is normal. But there is bronchospasm, that's why CO2 has gone to normal. And now in this case, silent chest, cyanosis, may be there, bradycardia, hypotension may be there, confusion. Now, what do you mean by, let me tell you, meaning of each and every word. Oxygen saturation less than 92%. That means he is going into, he is going, uh, going into hypoxic site. He is going toward the hypoxia. Silent chest, meaning is, there is so much of bronchospasm is there, there is no air entry no air entry with the result you are not able to hear no ronchi heard no ronchi heard because of so much of bronchospasm no air coming and going and that's why co2 is rising but a point i have been telling you previously also severe bronchospasm CO2 is not able to go out, that's why CO2 which was less than normal is moving toward normal and now it will be moving more toward the acidic side. Okay, bradycardia, this is due to increase because as the CO2 rises, patient go into CO2 narcosis. In CO2 narcosis, the findings are bradycardia, arrhythmias and confusion. All these are the findings that you got in life-threatening condition. So I hope you are clear about it. Okay. Confusion is a life-threatening condition. Now what he says, there is something called near fatal asthma also. The NICE guideline has mentioned one more thing, near fatal asthma. CO2 is rising above the normal. Now you understood the meaning? less than normal normal level and more than normal now it has gone even maybe it has gone more than uh, normal range but more important is patient needs mechanical ventilation mechanical ventilation is needed why because there is so much of asthma and now you understood the meaning why in a, this such case is when we use we use ventilator only you use after intubation if you use simple ka, ka simple ka, the non invasive ka, ka ventilator it, it will have no role no advantage so near fatal is when the co2 level is above the normal range or patient need mechanical ventilation so i hope you are very clear about very clear about the moderate, severe, life-threatening and near fatal type of asthma. Okay? Yeah. So how to manage? How to manage? How to manage? Nice guidelines say arterial blood gas analysis should be done in all the patients where the oxygen saturation is less than 92%. 
ऑफ कोर्स ऑक्सीजन सेचुएशन यू कैन मेजर बाय पल्स ऑक्सीमीट्री दैट वी नो वेरी वेल सिंपल बेड साइड चेस एक्सरे इज रूटीनली नॉट एडवाइज इन एस्तमा रूटीनली बट इट मस्ट बी डन इफ दे इज लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग एस्तमा द पॉइंट आई मैंशन टू यू you suspect pneumothorax how can you suspect if there is shifting shifting of trachea on palpation or you are getting hyper resonant hyper resonant on percussion you are uh, doing percussion and you are getting hyper resonant on one side that means pneumothorax has occurred or patient fail to respond to therapy you are giving therapy but patient not responding there are three condition okay you have to go for x ray now how to manage a case of severe asthma admission criteria not every patient you like to admit as per nice guideline there are certain criteria have been given patient with life threatening should be admitted the criteria of life threatening i gave to you patient with severe acute asthma if they fail to respond to initial treatment you are giving initial treatment but they are not responding although they are in the severe category not in the life threatening but they are not responding to your treatment admit the patient now other the other than these two main criteria there are certain other admission criteria also what they say patient near fatal as attack that we have discussed pregnancy a previous the patient had a near fatal asthma in the past and now he is coming you will not take a chance at all okay in such cases even moderate or even severe cases you like to admit lady with pregnancy don't take it lightly if you feel they should be admitted immediately an attack occurring despite using oral corticosteroids and presentation at night if they're coming at midnight that means he is having severe asthma so they are the additional criteria for admission but anyway if they are not then life threatening and severe asthma not responding with therapy is the criteria of admission now oxygen definitely patient patient come in the emergency room we have to give the patient are hypoxemic you have to give oxygen therapy okay and obviously it is very quite presumed that the patient to whom you have admitted who is severe asthma or life threatening it is hypoxemia you will be there definitely then you start with 5 liters or 15 liter of supplement oxygen via non rebreath mask and our aim is to make saturation in the range of 94 to 98 so the key words to remember here are number 1 is 15 liters 15 liters the first criteria and second is psu to 94 to 98 there are only two key words to remember regarding oxygen therapy to make a two word to ka one is ka make a box oxygen is equal to 15 liters and aka spo2 94 to 98 percent. That's all. This is summary of summary of in this particular slide. Now bronchodilation start with saba. Okay, saba. That is salbutamol or terbutaline. Okay. Well, a patient without feature of life threatening or near fatal asthma. we can give standardized pressure meter dose inhaler or we can give by nebulizer i repeat again patient has come to you and there is no life threatening or near fatal 
that means he's in the moderate or in the severe phase. And remember, we have admitted certain cases like pregnancy who are not uh, life-threatening or, or who are near fatal. We can even admit them in the moderate stage also. In such cases, we have to give meter dose or maybe by nebulization. So keywords are MDI or nebulizer, SABA, okay? Right? But if, if the patient has got life-threatening, then nebulized SABA should be used. But there's no point in such cases, there's no point in giving by meter dose. So friends, the key word to remember are non-life-threatening or non-severe you give MDI or nebulize, but in severe cases give by nebulized SABA only. The two key words to remember in this particular slide. Steroids. All patients should be given 40 to 50 milligram steroid orally. All severe cases, he is talking about oral steroid 40 to 50 milligram daily. And you continue, pa patient respond. Okay. And during that time, patient should continue the other medication what he is taking. So the nice guideline they say that in such cases you first give oral steroid. So the key word to remember here is oral steroids. Only one key word. Ipratropium bromide is a short acting muscarinic antagonist. We know very well it is an anti cholinergic drug. Short acting anti choli drug okay so when to use we use in severe or life-threatening asthma only in severe and life-threatening not in the uh, even moderate or severe uh, or, or moderate or moderate or in a routine case only when the patient is life-threatening or they, if they do not respond to beta-2 agonist and steroid treatment. In the patient in the moderate stage, you come, you give Saba or whatever drug and you give steroid and they are not responding. Then you can go for nebulized ipratropium bromide. It's a short-acting anti drug. Now, the question which was there, intravenous magnesium sulfate. Nice guidelines they say, this is a treatment to be given for severe life-threatening asthma. Like in our case, the patient is having severe attack, life-threatening. Then only you have to give intravenous magnesium sulfate. Well, nice guidelines say if you plan to give aminophylline, you as a resident doctor must consult the consultant. Don't give without guidelines of the senior. Okay. And finally, finally, those who fail to respond to uh, therapy, right? And then it's now you shift the, uh, the patient to in the high density unit or, in, uh, or intensive thoracic care unit. That means you switch over to uh, intensive care unit. And now the patient has been put into intensive care where he's not responding to aminophile and magnesium sulfate also. They, they intubate and ventilation. Remember, we are not giving any non-invasive. Now we have to intubate or we can go for intracorporeal membrane oxygenation can be done in such cases. This is how you are going to manage the case of asthma. In inpatient, so we got criteria of, of admission or how to go in a stepwise way. And finally, patients should be shifted to intensive thoracic unit and there you like to intubate the patient. Now when to discharge? The criteria is patient is stable on the discharge medication. That is no nebulizer or oxygen for the last 12 to 24 hours. One day free of oxygen and no nebulization. And you check the inhaler technique, you have to 
teach that whether he is using the inhaler <coughs> properly or not. That is very essential. Because even he is taking the inhaler but his technique is wrong, then definitely this is useless uh, treatment. So he has to be taught the inhaler technique also. And PEF is and the best. Just imagine, I started the theory with PEF. Okay. And it was 50 to 75 percent when we say it was moderate. And I told you one thing very clearly, PEF is a single best criteria, rest all are subjective. So here also he says that before you discharge the patient, <clears throat> you feel the patient is clinically all right. But he never discharge unless you have done the PEF more than 75 percent, that means he is perfectly all right. So single best reason to discharge is PEF more than 75%. Question number 8. Steel worker, shortness of breath. And he says he feels wheezing at work. Okay. At work, his problem is a steel worker. What next diagnostic? So as I told you, peak flow rate at work and at home. The question I discussed previously, that occupation patient having asthma in uh, for occupation asthma check their flow rate during the work and after and during the weekends okay the golden line to remember the point i mentioned previously right so peak flow at work and at home and they are the direct detect occupation asthma right so measurement of peak flow rate and as i mentioned previously these patients should be referred to specialists if you are suspecting are suspecting occupational asthma this again a very very important point that once you suspect you have done the peak pef to be done by the car in by you but after that since they are prone to occupational power line and that is going for lifelong they must be referred to especially for the follow-up. Okay. So these were the questions based on asthma. Thank you very much. God bless all of you.